Okay, so um, I'm just going to talk through a little bit of the reasons as to why young children are at a higher risk of burn injuries and why we need to be particularly careful with that group. Now I'm going to talk through a few stats. Um, it's not to scare you, but it's to give you an understanding of why this particular group is at a higher risk and to give you some techniques as to how you can reduce this risk for them. So babies and young children in particular have thinner skin and is more fragile, they will actually burn it quicker and deeper and at a lower temperature. So something that might only cause a very minor burn for an adult can cause a significant burn for a young child or a baby. So even things like a hot cup of tea or coffee will cause a bit of pain for us, but for a young child, a lot of pain and suffering. So I'm gonna talk about that a little bit too. So with 76% of severe paediatric burns occurring in the home, it is quite clear that this is something that as parents and caregivers, we are very responsible for. So I'm gonna talk through most of the things that happen in the home, making sure that I stick to that area because they're the things that we can control. So looking at those particular burns from the zero to five year olds, 82% of all paediatric burns are scald burns. So this is from hot liquid or steam. Most commonly things like pulling down pots and pans or hot cups of tea and coffee. The next most pro predominant type of burn for that age group is your contact burns. And this is from them touching something extremely hot or extremely cold. Most uh, commonly the hot. Stats also show us that 96% of all burns are unintentional and are therefore preventable. And they're preventable by making very small environmental or behavioural changes in the home. And we're going to run through those today. Oh, go with that one first. Most burns in the home do actually occur in the kitchen. And I think you can imagine why. You've got lots of hot things in the kitchen. You've got your oven, your stove tops, your microwave, and all that cooking going on in that one particular room. Now, so just on the pictures up here, the one on the left I do have of a barrier that is between the kitchen and the young child. And that is one of the best ways that you can reduce those burns from happening that are accidental. So pulling down pots and pans, all those sorts of things, just like a little baby gate that you put at the top and bottom of stairs. And that will just keep those little children out of the room so they can't get under your feet or start exploring and touching things they shouldn't be touching. Another really easy way to reduce those burns is actually by doing things like making sure what they can reach is pushed at the very back. So things like cords from kettles that might be hanging down. The kettle itself might be cordless, but the actual base that you put it on has a cord, making sure that's right at the back so those little hands can't get to it. Um, and then things like when you're actually using your pots and pans, making sure that you're using the back two burners as much as possible. And if you are using all four, or if you are using the ones at the front, make sure those handles are turned around towards the back or at least the sides. Also for your own safety, because even us, we can be clumsy and hurt ourselves by knocking into those. I'm not the most uh, uh, awesome cook, so I make sure I do that too for myself. So even things like contact burns, touching the front of the oven, uh, those sorts of things also need to be prevented. So that's your contact burn. But you can see the second picture on the left uh, with a little kid looking up towards the pot handle. Um, and the last picture on the right is of a young boy trying to grab his older sister's noodles. Um, and that's quite common is keeping that hot food around. Little hands start to explore and they pull things down because they're learning. So how they learn is they just try things out. Um, and sometimes when you try something out for the first time, it doesn't always work perfectly. So even something as simple as if you are heating something in the microwave, making sure that you stir it before you start eating it because microwaves create those hot spots and one particular part of the food could be uh, very, very hot. Um, but if you stir it, it will make it a little bit cooler all around. So moving on to another area that has a high risk of burn injuries, and this is the bathroom. Okay, so obviously one of the quickest and easiest ways that you can reduce those um, scald burns from happening is by actually reducing the temperature of the hot water that is delivered through those taps. So it needs to be at 50 degrees. At 50 degrees, it will take about a minute for a burn to occur. Raising it just by five degrees takes that to 10 seconds. Raise it again to 60 degrees, that will be an instant scald burn. So reducing it from 60 to 50 degrees is going to have a huge impact on reducing the severity um, and also reducing the possibility of a burn happening. 
Other simple things like making sure you turn the cold water tap on first and that you turn it off last. So there's never that hot water fully coming out. Always making sure every child is supervised while they're in the bathroom, because even if you step away for a second, they're going to go up to those taps. And certainly when we've got mixer taps, they're a lot easier to pull rather than the turning ones. So making sure they're always supervised. Also make sure that if you're not able to regulate the temperature of your bath water, um, test that water before you put bub in. And generally a good spot to do that is on the inside of your wrist. If it's too hot for this, it's going to be way too hot for baby. Another one we've seen an increase at the Women's and Children's Hospital is from children grabbing straighteners and hair curlers. Even after you've unplugged them um, and they're cooling down, they are still incredibly hot because some of these things get up to about 250 degrees Celsius when you're ironing your hair. Um, and by making sure that we put those fully away in those sort of um, heat proof bags, those little hands can't get to those. So there's quite a few things that you can do in the bathroom just to make sure they're that little bit safer. So in the lounge room, another area that we spend a lot of time in, especially as families, um, but there are lots of little hazards in that area as well. Certainly this top point of never drinking a hot drink, never drinking a hot drink while holding a child is one of the key ones, because as we know, bubs, they wiggle around a lot. <laughs> so even if you know you're steady with your cup of tea and you're not gonna spill it on yourself, bub's gonna wriggle, and there could be flailing arms that pop in it, it could be that you spill it and spill it on bub. So even like using things like travel mugs that have the lid on the top are going to be a great way to reduce the incident of that burn happening. Making sure that if you do have a cup of tea, that it's at the back of the table or somewhere high where those little hands can't get to. As we're coming into winter as well, we need to be careful around things like uh, heaters and uh, fireplaces, making sure that there's something between the fireplace and the heater and your child, whether it's a guard or a little gate of some sort to just make sure they don't put their little hands on it. Another one that's interesting they have an increase with friction burns has been treadmills. And with the increasing number of people having treadmills in their homes, um, when people are on the treadmill, and they've got that sort of belt that's quite rough on it. Um, somebody's on the treadmill, a little baby comes in and tries to get on, or it could be a toddler as well, and they can actually get pushed back and stuck. And it only takes a couple of seconds for that belt to keep running, and they can get a really nasty friction burn. So again, you're going back to your thing of a baby gate, putting that around the back of the treadmill, or protecting them, making sure they can't get to it. Uh, even something as simple as making sure that they're asleep or occupied when you're going to be doing your exercise. And then one that we always need a little reminder of is your candles. We tend to forget about them once we've put them on, making sure that we never leave them anywhere near um, some flammable material and also making sure that we never leave it unattended. And some general tips are around the home. Keeping matches and lighters, especially when you've got toddlers, from day one to two, they might be able to reach, they might not be able to reach something, and by day two, they can reach it. So making sure they're securely locked away or somewhere very high that they definitely cannot get to. Another one is never using heat backs or hot water bottles on, uh, directly on young children's skin. It can actually cause a very nasty burn. Um, again, that goes back to that first point I spoke about today about children having thinner skin than us and then burning um, quicker at a lower temperature. That might be quite a nice heat for us, but for a young baby that can cause a really serious burn. And then we all grew up with it, slip, slop, slap, so you can slide, so your son's safe. Do you remember that for baby as well? Um, and then another one, your hot surfaces on your feet. Not such a problem as we're coming into winter, but certainly in some of that hot sun beating down on concrete or metal surfaces, those sorts of things can really heat up and cause a really nasty burn for a young child and their feet. So there's lots of things around the home that you can do to make sure that you are being safe and keeping your bub safe as well. But we do know that we can't prevent all burns. So it's really, really important that you know correct first aid because there's lots of myths out there about first aid that can actually do more damage than good. So the crucial step is that point number two. Call the burn under cool running water for 20 minutes. This is the vital part. This is what's going to stop the burning process and cool that burn down. So one of the first steps though is actually to take, out, take off any jewellery or clothing or nappies that bub is wearing. Anything that can restrict around the burn or that can prevent the burn from being cooled appropriately. So obviously trying to cool a burn on the back, if there's a big thick nappy, 
you're going to have to take that off because the, the cool water is not necessarily going to run down and cool all of that area. With that cool running water though, it's really, really important to make sure you keep bub warm as well because there can be a risk of hypothermia. So you want to cool that area down and you want to cool it down well, but you also want to make sure bub is warm. So cooling down the area, but making sure there's a blanket or something over bub as well. So the cool running water is for 20 minutes. And I know that sounds like a really long time and most people, most adults, just go five minutes, that'll be fine. It's not. Your skin is just like meat. You take, you, you put your tuna steak on the heat, you take it off and you let it cook for another couple of minutes. Your skin does the same. Once you take your skin away from the heat source, it does actually continue to cook for up to two to three hours. So that burn gets deeper and deeper unless you do 20 minutes of cool running water. Okay, so you can also use things like hydrogels to help with pain relief. And certainly with young ones that can't quite understand why they're in pain, um, that's always a help as well. Never, ever use things like ice. You might think that ice is okay because it will cool it down quicker. It's not, it can actually do a lot more damage. So it is that cool running water for 20 minutes. So the next step is then to actually cover the burn with a loose um, covering and it can either be cling wrap or it can be a clean, damp, lint-free cloth. Um, and what that will do is actually protect the skin from germs and infection, and it will also help with pain relief as well. And you must always seek medical attention, especially if it's a young one, um, because you cannot always see how much damage has been done. Um, and certainly if the burn is larger than a 20 cent coin, or if it is on your hands, your face, your lap area, or your feet, you must go and see a doctor because all, right. all of those areas take a little bit longer to heal and are a lot more fragile and sensitive. Okay. So I just wanted to acknowledge um, our sponsors, uh, BurnAid, who actually are supporting us to go all around South Australia to actually run these sessions and run our stand. We are actually just at A18 over here. So if you want any more information at all, come and say hello. Um, my name is Bethany. I work for the Julian Burton Burns Trust. We're a local South Australian uh, charity um, and we're dedicated to uh, the prevention, care and support of burns. So if there's any questions, please feel free to ask now. Or if you don't want to ask in front of me, just go over to um, A18 and any questions there are very welcome. But thank you very much and uh, keep little ones safe.